Hello and uh, welcome everybody again. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this session uh, titled uh, Technology in the Media uh, in the Media and Arts. And our guest speaker is uh, James Trotter. Am I saying it right? That's correct, James Trotter. Yes, and Dr. Ahlam Muhtasib, who's trying to join us. Uh, hopefully she can be here any moment. Uh, before we start the session, I'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, Anera. Uh, for supporting uh, this event and I'm going to play a couple of videos for uh, Anera and Arabesque Media uh, before we begin. So I'm going to go ahead and play those videos for you. Hi there, I am Nazi and I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. I am a graduate of Anira's uh, employment accelerating uh, program and I am also father of two children. My chance to participate in uh, this program changed my life uh, to better uh, uh, in many ways. Before the program I was uh, uh, chasing or looking for a job trying to get a job for a whole year after the program and now I get uh, two jobs and I am happy with that. The uh, first job uh, I work with Anira as uh, outcome team here in Gaza for uh, PLUS uh, program and the second is a front-end developer with the Cheek company. I am grateful to Anira as well as for the technical and soft skills that I learned in uh, the program. My personality has uh, developed uh, greatly after the program. I can now do uh, an interview with uh, all self-confidence, uh, dealing with person around me uh, more professionally. Uh, actually, it was a great uh, experience on all aspects, uh, community, uh, technical and soft skills, uh, teaching method, everything. <coughs> It was uh, great. Honestly, I I wish the time come back and I can join the program again and again. Thank you. I think you're muted. Oh, Last. I can't hear you though. Can you hear me? Thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be starting the session in a minute. One more video. Okay. <laughs> It took forever. <laughs> yourselves, I really appreciate it. You are the orchestra leader of your business or organization. You are an author, chef, physician, dentist, real estate agent, or an organization leader. You are in it for success and doing what you love, but you don't have the time to learn marketing skills and need to focus on your business and customers. Who are we? Think of us as an extension of your business or organization. We are your marketing team without the cost of hiring employees and dealing with the hassle. We are experts, digital marketers who care about your business and its success. We give you exactly what you need to grow your business without the unnecessary extras web design and development, social media marketing, email marketing, online reputation management, search engine optimization, online advertising, video editing, branding and graphic design, printing, print and digital signage. You run your business and let us be your worry-free marketing agency. It doesn't have to be costly. It has to be effective.
Well, I'm glad you joined us, Dr. Ahlam. And uh, welcome, uh, James and Dr. Ahlam. We're happy to have you with us today at the first uh, US Bell Tech Expo and Summit. Uh, this is the session about uh, media and art. And uh, you both have worked in this field and have communication background. And you have some projects to share with us today. Uh, but also importantly, we'd like to hear about how did you utilize Palestinian talents to create uh, your projects, uh, whether you know in, in Palestine or, else, or elsewhere. So let me start by introducing our first uh, speaker, Dr. Ahlam Muhtasib. Uh, Dr. Ahlam is a professor of media studies and the director of Center for Study of uh, Muslim and Arab Worlds at California State University, San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Uh, she has won many prestigious awards for her innovative work. She uh, researched, her research interest includes digital communication, social media, social justice, and the, uh, the disparate communi communities. Her most recent project is her award-winning documentary, 1948, Creation and Catastrophe. She won the 2019 Rebuilding Alliance, Rebuilding Alliance Storyteller Award. The film also won the Jerusalem International Film Festival's 2019 Special Jury Award in the feature documentary category. Currently, she works on new documentary on the three young Muslims who were murdered in Chapel Hills in 2019 and the state of racism and Islamophobia in the United States. Very impressive background and work, Dr. Ahlam. Uh, welcome to the session. Would love to hear your story. Would love to hear about your project, uh, you and James. Uh, if you could please shed some light and uh, uh, let us share with us what you've worked on and, and how uh, you created this documentary and uh, films as well as the 360 video you mentioned. And if you have any demo or a promo to share with us, we'd be happy to, uh, you can share your screen and, and show everybody. So um, without further ado, please uh, welcome Dr. Ahlam. Thank you so much, Marwan. I really appreciate the invitation and thank you for US Pal Tech uh, Expo and Summit uh, staff who have been helping us. Uh, and apologies for the glitch at the beginning. <laughs> this is my first time using this platform ever. Uh, so how are we gonna do this? Are you gonna introduce James? Uh, and do you want me to talk first and then you will introduce James or are you gonna introduce James and we both just talk about our project? Whatever you're comfortable with. If you're both gonna talk together, I can introduce James and, and then you can take it from there. Is that I'd, rather if, I'd rather if you do that because we will be uh, going back and forth basically. Sure, sure, no problem. So welcome again, James. Uh, James uh, Trotter, am I saying it right? Okay, so James uh, is an assistant director of academic technologies and innovation at California State University, San Bernardino. He's a graduate from California State University, Long Beach with BA in film production. He has worked in the media industry as a camera operator, director, and producer of live event production in Southern California and Nevada. As an as the assistant director for the Department of Academic Technology and Innovation at CSUSB, he oversees the development of new technologies applied to academics. Uh, his, cur his current focus is with you know, uh, immersive media such as 360 video, virtual reality, and augmented reality. Working with Dr. Ahlam Muhtasib, a professor of media studies at CSUSB and local journalist Smith uh, Mahmoud and Ryan uh, Sukar. Together they are documenting life in the Shatila refugee camp, Beirut, Lebanon using 360 video technology. Welcome, James. Thank you very much. It's a it's pleasure to be here. It's all yours. Okay, um, I guess uh, we can start by talking about most current uh, project. I have worked with James over the years on several <laughs> several innovations, uh, especially in teaching my online classes. For example, James was the first one to introduce me to the technology of Lightboard, where you have a board, you can write on it and students could still see you and it flips the writing. And we did some other, you know, like projects over the year. Uh, last summer I was with James, uh, in um, uh, 
like a seminar, you know, for a week on the most innovative, you know, like technological innovations in terms of instruction using 3D and virtual reality, augmented reality, X real um, or X reality, you know, different types of technologies. And while we were actually doing uh, the um, the training, I, James is on my Facebook page, and uh, it's 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 a very interesting story. So I once saw the pictures that our young journalist in the camp now that you mentioned, uh, uh, Rayan Sukkar and Samih Mahmoud, uh, we saw their engagement pictures. I saw their engagement pictures, and they were fantastic. I'm going to share my screen now. Let me hope it, it's going to work because I want to show you how gripping they were. Those young, you know, couple uh, celebrating their engagement, beautiful, dressed up. On the backdrop is the is Shatila refugee camp, which is one of the worst, you know, camps in terms of, you know, living conditions in, in Lebanon. And, and that's my specialty. You know, my film, 1948 Christian Catastrophe, was about, you know, uh, Palestine, about, you know, uh, the, the creation of the state of Israel at the expense of Palestinians. And, and the, the ethnic expulsion and genocide against Palestinians. So that's exactly what I do. And I actually toured the camp several rounds. I filmed there. So I shared their pictures. Let me see if I can do that. I tried it and it worked for a minute. <laughs> um, let's share. When you share a video, make sure you click on use uh, video audio in the okay. sharing. So I'm sharing it now. Can you see it? I'm, I'm not sharing a video, but I want to make it bigger so you could see the whole frame. So, yeah, I love these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> these are the pictures, uh, and they are on their, um, you know, like Facebook page, which is public. So, um, and, and every, it was shared why. It it went viral the next day. It was they were shocked that people were sharing them around the world. They were were interviewed by media. Uh, so I had you know I shared them on my Facebook page, and I, I tried to make it like full screen. It's not working. Um, and this is where James comes in because he sees them on my Facebook page and he writes them. So yeah, I, I saw. Um... Because I've, Al-Khalaf and I've been friends for a number of years uh, at the university, and and um, I've always taken a, a deep interest in the history and the uh, story she brings from Palestine. So when I saw these pictures, I thought, "This is amazing! These this couple is beautiful. They're it's, it's but you have that contrast between this beautiful couple that's together, and then you see." Uh, the images of the um, uh, the brick and the uh, 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 metal coming out. So I thought it's it's a very contrast, and I wanted to know more about it. And I I, I said I would like to see this in 360. So I see the beauty of them, but what's what's the context of that in that image? And that's where the 360 comes in. It's when we look at a flat image, we see one view of something. But using the 360 camera, we put the image, everything in context. What's the, the sense of place? Uh, where, how do, how do we get to learn everything that's in that area? And um, so that was the next step. And I said, well, I told our clients, I said, hey, why don't we, it'd be great if we could send a 360 camera to, to them. And then we could take pictures and show that to the students here to see what this is. Uh, so I could put it in context. And then the next thing, Aklam had uh, reached out to the students and we sent them one of these cameras. <laughs> so, so yes, I, I was able to locate them through my network in Lebanon. I have a big network because I have been working there for, for, as I said, you know, many rounds. And I was just there in the summer of 2019 where I screened my film and uh, Mari Yes. I, I hear echo, I don't know why. Uh, anyway, um, I was able to locate them and James, got, you know, I talked to them. I said, what do you think of this idea? At the beginning, we were not really sure what we want to do with this or where it's going to take us. But um, 
what I was preparing for was to show my students, you know, my work, because I teach a, a class first on qualitative research methods. And I talk a lot about my ethnographic work in the refugee camps. So that could have been, you know, like it would be a great to use a, as a classroom resource. And I also teach the, pal the settler colonialism and Palestinian cinema class. And that's an upper division class that is taken by both graduate and undergraduate. The first one, the research methods, it's a graduate class. So I started thinking like, okay, I wasn't sure, but but to, to, to create something that I could use as a, a as a classroom resource and engage, you know, people from the camp where they decide how they want to do this. So we started, uh, we created a WhatsApp uh, group and we, James sent them the camera and they started sending us images of the camp. So we said, okay, first, what, what are we going to do? Well, we want to educate people about why do we have refugee camps in the first place, right? Uh, how the camp was created. So we said, okay, let's do a story about Shatila camp. And the story will re re resemble, you know, the story of all other camps, uh, especially in Lebanon. Um, and they kept on sending us materials. We would go back and say, can you change it? Can you do this, that, etc." until we created our first five minute uh, video, which we will show with you today. Uh, but James, do you wanna go through some of the technical aspects maybe? Yeah, let me go through a little bit of it. Um, I'll go ahead and think of this is how to share this. Oh, I see what we gotta do to share the screen. Okay, I think. And I don't need to share audio yet. So I'll share this. So you do see the PowerPoint, I'm assuming, right now. So this is um, the camera that we're using, the Ricoh uh, uh, Theta 5. Um, when we did it, we, we're using it as a kit. We're sending out the camera, the tripod, and, and a field recorder that's optional. Um, let me kind of scroll through some of the areas. One of the things that we're doing is look at the pedagogy behind this. It's, it's immersive learning. It's, it's putting the student uh, in that environment using this camera. That you can use YouTube, uh, Google Cardboard to immerse the student in it. Um, one, it's a simple camera. It's not very big. It's got the, a microphone, a very good microphone on it, two lenses. Uh, it records up to about, they'll do about five or uh, 10 minutes at a time. With the camera, you can do stills and uh, live video with it. Um, one of the things is where you position a camera. Um, you shouldn't have it too high or too low. You, you want to kind of have it right at eye level, which you can see where I was testing it at the, the beach here. If it's too high, you can see it kind of flattens the image and looks a little weird. But that's kind of where we were doing. We we're trying to, to have it in a position where it's uh, like at eye level on a tripod, when you start moving it around, um, like hand holding it, it can get kind of uh, motion sick. And that's something that we realized that, uh, especially with this video that we'll show that we had to pull away from some of the walking shots with it through the camp and just do it static. And then also one of the key things is artistically with this technology is what looks good. Uh, is you don't want a boring location. You want something that's artistically interesting and, and visually interesting. So this is a, a, an image at um, a, a Chicano art studio in Los Angeles, which has all these kind of cool images that we were doing other tests with it. And the lighting, it's just natural lighting you're using with this camera. I was kind of stop to share there. Let's see here, let me get out of this. Um, and then I've, we've, this, we went back and forth uh, with getting the videos to upload it to uh, Google Drive. We download it. Uh, we can use, what's nice about this technology, we can use um, Adobe Premiere and do the same type of video editing that we would do with any type of traditional video uh, to do it. And our goal is to continue these stories. We got one story. There's more video that has come in that we are going to edit, which shows uh, the, 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 the home that they live in, uh, more their family, uh, which we'll be putting together. And that's the goal is to do a long-term project where we're constantly getting more video coming in um, of these stories from the camp. 
And what's nice about a camera like this, it's not, it's not very obtrusive. It's small. You can kind of tuck it away and you can uh, allow for life to happen around it. Uh, and that's kind of a key thing. When you have a big camera, usually people react to that, that camera. For a documentary, this is great because it sits there, people forget about it, and you can let life happen and really kind of get an idea of what's really going on in that location. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show some of the video. I guess it's five minutes. So I'll show that run the video so we can see it. And, um, and then we can kind of talk about it a little bit after that. I will control it with, um, with YouTube. We have accessibility controls where I can, you can move you around with the keyboard. I'll do it limited so it's not too much. Um, but that's one of the things that makes it fun is you can either use uh, watch it on a, a laptop like this or on your cell phone. Or you could use Google Cardboard or VR headsets, and you could be completely immersed in that environment and move around and see everything that's to be seen in that place. Uh, so I think for these, the what we want to do with the refugee camps, to educate students here, it's one thing to see a flat image. But putting it in 360 and you hear the sounds, you can almost smell things from the, your, your mind. It really puts you into environment. So even what we're going to show in three uh, in, on, a, on a screen isn't as compelling as it is if you put a VR headset or a Google Cardboard with it. So I'll go ahead and share this here. Let me pull this up. I'll come back here. Let's go here. My camera to the image. Okay, and here we go. can't see it I can hear it from I can't see it let me try it again here and that's the lovely thing about technology when you're using a new technology that you haven't used before let's see here I think Marwan said that you have to share audio and there is a button that you have to click okay let's try so when you share a screen it's going to ask you if you want to share the entire thing or a tab then in the bottom left corner, uh, click on use uh, screen audio. This way there will be- Got it. Okay, so let's try this again. And here we go. Okay, do you see it now? Yes. Okay. البناء العشوائي خطر كثير في بنات المخيم 
ثمانية وتسعة طوابق وهي البنات مبنية بدون قصص هندسية صحيحة لهيك كتير مهندسين بيقولوا انه اكثر من عشر مباني بالمخيم مهددين بالسكون وهي المشكلة نفسها بيواجهها مخيم برج المعارض الانفجار انا كنت بهذا المبنى عن سميح واحنا قاعدين يعني الصوت كان جدا ضخم فاتت غبرة رهيبة على البيت فاحنا فكرنا انه بناء من هالبنايات وقعت وكنا ناطرين انه خلص بدنا نموت لانه المخيم مثل ما شايفين كل البنايات متكيين على بعض مثل البولينج اذا وقعت وحده كبتوا الباقي اللي وراها مثل ما شايفين <تصفيق> Yeah, so I'm moving it so you can see around. So James, you're the one actually moving the camera. So I'm moving the camera. So what it does, and here, I'll go and stop it here. And I'll come out of this. Let's see. You're fine now. Okay. So what we I did is I was moving the camera uh, using the keyboard controls to move the camera around so you could see in different spaces. And for me, uh, this is what makes immersive learning really powerful, is that it allows the student the opportunity to explore a space, uh, understand the context of everything that's in that area. Uh, we can censor a lot of what one area in the screen that you see right here. Where I am as a camera operator and producer, I'm saying, this is all you will see. As using the 360, I, you see everything. You see the reality of behind it. We and I think to tell the direction and angle to view, basically. Exactly. And I think to tell the stories that um, I would love to go to Palestine and see this with Aklam someday. And that's, we talked about this. She's going to take me there. Because I, I think this is how we need to have people understand what's, what, the, what the refugee camps are and, cr and create that uh, sense of a better understanding of the reality and not have it censored, but have it open uh, for students and the general public to really understand what life is, what life is like and what's, and how the people are. Uh, so, so the camera, go ahead. Dr. Ahlam and, and James too, is, by doing this story, did you come up uh, against, or somebody approaches uh, or say there's a do more stories that we can do with a similar concept with the 360 videos? Yes, uh, first I wanted to say that, uh, just to add to what James explained, is that the camera, you put it like in the middle of the scene, uh, a site, and it captures literally all 360 at the same time, nonstop. So it's, it's a little bit confusing at the beginning. To, I, I struggled to, to get used to it. Um, then, you know, you, you edit it and, and, and people are allowed to manipulate it like James was able to do. Or as we said, you could just wear the uh, headgear and walk, like walk around the scene you're watching. Uh, yes, uh, there are many, many um, uh, uses of it. I, I actually just read an article. I think it was last week before about new development. You know how we are now all there, you know, doing distance learning everywhere in the world. Basically, we are forced to do it. While we were thinking about this long time ago, James and I. Uh, thinking about VR uh, just as, as a, an innovation in teaching topics that you don't have access to easily, like a refugee camp. If I'm going to teach about the history of Palestine and teach about what is, what is a refugee camp, who are the refugees, uh, this could be a very powerful tool to 
make it as close as possible when I can take students on a journey to Lebanon to see for themselves, like field work. Um, so I read now because we are all used, I read that now they are trying to do this with Zoom and, you know, uh, all kinds of platforms used for distance learning to make the interaction between the professor of, and the student more lively. So there are, it's, they started actually looking into these applications. I think it was uh, writing Palestine, write Palestine, the Write Palestine or Writing Palestine Festival. I don't know if you attended that, Marwan, but no. they have a beautiful intro because it happened all online, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a historical moment. But they had this beautiful, like, hashtag on the, on the beginning at the landing screen, welcoming everyone. It had Palestinian folk, uh, and then showing, you know, different aspects of life in Palestine. It was it was all in, in virtual reality in 3D, and it was beautiful, beautiful. Using this technology, do you... Uh, see people in Palestine, especially young people who are into this, into new technology, using it for uh, uh, <clears throat> academic, for tourism, for other industries, where not only they can utilize the technology, but also benefit and monetize it somehow. Yeah, the tour the tourism industry is already using it um, in a lot of ways. Uh, you're seeing it in tourism. You're seeing it in real estate. Um, you're seeing uh, the use of 360 immersive in a lot of different capacities. As far as social sciences, and uh, there has been a, a, a some number of faculty, not just from San Bernardino, but other ones that were using this to. Uh, bring students into it, but as a as a technology, we're seeing much more of it. As you see more VR becoming um, uh, getting deeper into the marketplace, you're seeing YouTube's been using it for a while. Vimeo's been using it. Facebook bought Oculus, and you can connect that right into YouTube, right into their their platform. So it's expanding, and the um, but the tourism is probably one of the biggest areas you're really you're really seeing it in. Right. I, I, also, I, yeah, go ahead. I just want to comment on this. Um, like I'm trying to imagine this in Palestine because I lived half of my life in Palestine before immigrating to the States. Yes, I could see, for example, um, my brother-in-law has a uh, Jabrini uh, dairy products company and they are always trying to find innovative ways of marketing their, uh, their industry, right? I could see, you know, a young uh, woman or a young man, you know, starting their own business to do commercials in 3D. It would mm -hmm. be fun and on online. I mean, definitely it has a lot of um, uses and now it's getting cheaper and cheaper and more affordable. So oh, yeah. the camera is 300. Yeah, the, the, to give you a good example, when we first started down this path in 360 video, we were using the... Um, uh, GoPro 360 cameras, and it was uh, it cost about three thousand dollars for a rig, and quite a bit of time to edit. So about eight months later, they came out with this, and this is three hundred dollars. Um, and you can get these now somewhere between two two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, depending on the quality you want. So it's it's very accessible for anybody to to get a, their hands on one. I see. Yeah, I was saying I love the story of Sabra and Shatila that you did. Uh, and they went you know, viral because, you know, they were kind of creative and doing pictures and you added another dimension to it. I can relate to Sabra and Shatila myself. My parents were raised in Sabra and Shatila. And believe it or not, our summer vacations were in Sabra and Shatila because I used uh -huh. to live in Qatar and every summer we would go to Sabra and Shatila for vacation. So I, I have good memories. I know this, the, the, situation there is very dire and uh, you know i can we can all see the wires and this and the crowdedness of the of the place uh, but i think what you're offering to viewers is is incredible because they can see you know in a 360 environment not just you know flat but one what you are saying is exactly what we are trying to do we don't want to show palestinians only as victims we don't want to show them as one dimensional, you know, receiving aid, etc. And I think that's really what grabbed our attention about uh, Rayan and mm -hmm. They are full of love, full of energy, full of optimism. And they find ways 
to survive, not only survive in the camp, they find ways to be happy, like, you know, their favorite restaurant, their, um, their dog, his dog, right? Uh, the simplest things in life that they are so creative in making them uh, into happy moments in spite of the destruction, in spite of uh, all the restrictions by the Lebanese government. And I could go on, like, don't start me as an academician because, you know, what? basically. One of the things I've learned from following them on, on, on Facebook um, and on our, our WeChat is I've seen other pictures that I want them to take the 360 camera uh, out to some of the, the fields where they're, the, the, the farm's at, others. It is, there's beauty there. There's a lot of beauty and um, wonderful moments that I'm seeing, and that's part of that truth. We, as I said, we in the media here in the in the West, we're see, programmed to see one view of what life is like there, right. and that's not the reality. The reality is so much richer. Or the terrorist image. I mean, it's, it has yeah, no, to be yeah, a new and, a new dimension to the entire situation and uh, well as a marketer i like to find ways that people can find money make money from technology and you're introducing a 360 technology and you utilized it actually in a palestinian you know environment uh, how can palestinians use this technology or media and art technology in general to monetize and and benefit and grow their economy using this i mean we talked about tourism we touched a little bit about academics is there any other applications that they can use it for before we jump to the q and a i would I, well let me just really quick. i would say that there's you know real estate is one thing you see it here um uh but also just on um We've used it for a good example here, the classrooms that we have here. If a, when we have a contractor that wants to see a space determining whether they want to put new media racks in that room or audio systems, instead of having that contractor come all the way to that space, we can say, here's a space, can you bid on this? On what would you, because now you get you see dimensions and, and ideas of where things would fit. And then you could have a, that conversation on, we need this, this equipment for this or how to sell that equipment for that in this room. So that's an option. Yeah, and, and also it's really, um, there are so many different ways of using it. Let me give you an example. Before I met James, um, now I sound like I'm 100 years old, <laughs> but I used to teach a class I called Muslim Women, well, I still teach the class, Muslim Women in Media and Society. And one of the very, I was one of the very first actually professors to use, uh, you know, virtual environments. And at that time, we didn't have this technology, but we had uh, the online environment. Uh, um, uh, names. <laughs> oh, uh, Second Life. Second Life. So I was one of the first people to use Second Life, uh, where I take my students, you know, um, they create avatars as Muslim women and they explore Second Life and, you know, um, they try their experience. What, what 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 does it feel to be a Muslim woman in a society like the United States, for example, or other societies around the world, etc.? If you study Second Life and the different ways it had been used, of course, you know some of it for bad purposes. So I'm not gonna norm romanticize it, right? But I I've seen I did a lot of research on Second Life. You know, it's used for really training uh, doctors on surgical operations. You would do a surgery with a doctor in a different country through Second Life, and it's very, very accurate in terms of representing visually how it looks like and how you actually do it. So you are like in a surgery room with a doctor from another place. I have seen people use it uh, to do um, exploration of uh, similar to tourism but you know archaeological places that people would never be able to go there i've seen actually one of the interesting things so when i did it with my students i said okay when you dress your avatars don't buy anything like you don't have to be but people actually built abayas and soaps and clothes i mean there are so many creative words and students love them and they actually ended up buying those although i told them you don't have to to use money you know like and it's it's you use London money, it's called, uh, that's the lab's name, uh, which is virtual money, but they 
actually have their value. And this has been going on since the end of the 1990s. Mm. It's not very new technology, but it was done without the new technologies we have now. And it was done mainly online. I see. With the closest to what we have now. Okay. So, so you can imagine so many different ways of actually utilizing it and making money. And one just have to be in a certain business or industry and think creatively, how can I utilize this? in my industry right okay great thank you so the first question we have is from Hassam. he's asking if uh, if, uh, if this camera or kind of technology camera would be implemented into cell phones in, in the near future it is to a certain extent um some cell phones already do uh, 180 degree panoramic views so you're already seeing half of that right now um but if it was going full 360 I'm sure at some point in time it probably will. Yes. Okay. My, my brother works for Apple. Uh, um, he's, a, he's a design engineer with Apple. Uh, and I think I think he mentioned that they are already working on that or really? exploring. Okay. I mean, what else are they going to do? Apple? Right. That's <laughs> next. That's the next. Well, that's the next stage. It's, it's, it's 3D uh, augmented, augmented reality. Uh, another two questions from Sean. Uh, first one, uh, I think that's for, for Sean. Who's holding the camera? And where are you manipulating the view post-recording? That's the first question. Uh, so first, what we did is there's two ways to do the, the, the number of ways. Um, the camera does have a little amount on the bottom of it. So you can put it on a tripod. You can put it on a selfie stick. You can put it on a mount and hang it. So there's a lot of ways you can attach the camera. Um, for what uh, they did is they were holding it or they put it on a tripod. Um, but the second question was, uh, one more time. Well, I didn't read it yet. So the second question. Uh, or what was the, first, the second half of the first question? Uh, that is, you can manipulate the view oh. in different ways uh, whenever you're watching uh, so, the already recorded video. So what? So when I did the presentation, I was controlling the view, so you could see that you're moving around. Um, no, when I when they were doing the recording, or most of the time we just have it static in one spot and let the action happen around it, and then and you use, can, and, and then you go in and YouTube and you can control it. And they use a tripod. We asked them to use a tripod because that's the best way to mm -hmm. have a control, you know, flow, flow of images. So yeah, so tripod is the way to do it. And then, um, no, I'm not manipulating the image in post-production, but when you play it back, I, you as the viewer have the ability to move wherever you wish in that space. I see. Okay. But of course, there is a special software to do the editing of the film that James, and, and that's not my expertise. So yeah. James does that. And that's a, a, Adobe Premiere. A, a Adobe Premiere is what we used to do. Adobe that. Premiere can, can edit 360. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know that. We used Premiere. I've never done 360. It's, it's, a, it's native to it. It's a one simple little button and, and the, control, the toolbar, and you can go full 360 with it. Okay. So my question now to you, uh, if, if Palestinians, whether in Palestine or elsewhere, camps, diaspora, want to wanna learn more about this technology, is there a way they can be trained taught, uh, coached on this? Uh, do you or somebody you know that can offer this as, as, a, as a way to help them? I think the simple, the, what makes it very simple is that the, it's the storytelling. The technology is very easy. It's, as, as I said, you put it on a tripod, you, you turn on the button and uh, it goes. And then what you're allowing is the world around it to happen. So I think in this case, on the technology side, is the camera produ production simple. The post production is a little more challenging. You would have to understand how to use like Adobe Premiere is the one that we're using for this to do the editing, which is the same type of video editing you would do with H 4K video or, or, or HD. Um, so there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube to learn how to use. Uh, Adobe Premiere. The, ch the part that's most challenging with this is, is, the, is the creative side of it. How do you want to tell a story? 
And, and that's always going to be the challenging part for anything is what's the story you want to tell so it's engaging. If I shot, used this 360 camera in a boring four walls, that's not interesting. It's going to be a boring video. But the camp, uh, what we did um, here at Chicano Park in, in San Diego or in, in, in East LA, uh, those have images that are engaging. So that's where I think the, the challenge is, is, is not so much the technology, but knowing how to tell a story. Exactly. And, and I just want to add that now, and I, then I have to go, actually. Uh, well, we are almost out of time, anyway. Yeah, we have uh, uh, nine minutes. Four minutes. Yeah, yeah, we are working now with Rayan and Samih, for example. They are working on a segment on uh, learning during COVID, you know, for the kids in the camps. There is a huge digital gap in terms of simply access, right? I mean, people there are struggling to have a living. So imagine, you know, having to, uh, so a lot of kids are missing on, have been missing for the last year. And uh, so uh, one of my contacts in the camp mentioned that. I talked to him about another, a totally different project. I was applying for an NEH grant to expand, you know, this project. And uh, where we have exchange and train, you know, the youth and give them cameras, like expand this. Ours is a pilot project. And we applied for any extra we didn't get it to amplify that. And uh, he said, when I talked to him, because we wanted community partners, he said, I wish somebody had made a document a documentary on children in the refugee camp during COVID. He said, they are not learning anything. They miss school, all of these things. So that's one thing we are working on a small one. The other thing I want to mention is um, th there are other Palestinians who did very innovative work. And I remember mm -hmm. Professor Zuhail Dahdar from the American University of Sharpa, which I, I actually tried to bring him last year to our campus, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And he uses a lot of other technologies like volumetric cameras, which nobody knows about. That's a totally different It was project. amazing. Yeah. He has amazing work. He did a full documentary in 3D and VR. He did augmented reality applications to learn about the history of Palestine, where you put actually an app. And, um, you know, a, 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 a Rawi comes to life and talks to you, and you feel it's in your hand. Um, so Suhail so might be also a good, a good person, actually, to invite to talk about his own innovations. Okay, great. Now, so this is part of your future projects that you're working on? Yes. Working with the we'll students in the, camp, in the camp. Great. Uh, we just want to remind people who are watching us uh, to go to the event tab and click on polls to answer the three polls we have over there. Also remind everybody to visit the expo and meet uh, the, the exhibitors we have, including the sponsor. And uh, do you have any closing remarks, Dr. Ahlam and James, before we wrap up the session? Thank you so much for inviting us. Um, very excited to be here and share our experience. Thank you, thank you. And and uh, Dr. Ahlam and I go back to the Auda days in, in San Diego uh, with the conferences and uh, it's been a while. It's good to see you, Doctor. And James, uh, thank you so much for joining us and being part of uh, the project that you're working on. I mean, we learned a lot from you today. I'm just very honored to be here and, and, and work with great faculty here at the campus. So I'm very lucky. Great. And I'm very lucky too to be working with James. He's very creative and innovative. Thank you. And always think of ways that we can collaborate through the US Pal Tech for training, coaching, uh, and helping young people to, to make a living uh, through you know yeah. economic development. Uh, so we're all, all always open to ideas. You're in the media and communication. I am in marketing as well. So I think collaboration is key to, to reach out and, and to help them over there, inshallah. Inshallah, that would be great. And maybe you can uh, think of also grants to help us fulfill that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you very much, Marwan. Thank you. For, thank you again. And uh, thank you for joining us, taking the time. And hopefully we can you can be with us in future events as well. Have a good and uh, our next session is... Uh, Let's see. Uh, finding and outsourcing digital marketing. Uh, that's going to start in 10 minutes. So uh, don't leave. Stay around and come back in 10 minutes. Go visit the expo. 
answer the polls questions so we can understand and learn from you uh, what you're looking for and what you need to accomplish and uh, talk to people network in these 10 minutes take a break uh, have some coffee and we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes or less